it's like making any decision with with your business, right? You're, 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 I think trust is huge. So you got to find someone or a company that you believe would handle your goods or products, you know, in the same manner you would. So you're really looking for an extension of your, of your brand. Now, beyond that, there's the, the practical things you need to consider um, location. So how are the goods shipping in? Is it close to either the manufacturer, the port? What are the costs there? And then transportation outward. So is there a savings based on location from the 3PL? Um, is there any potential discount shipping rates available through the 3PL? And I guess ultimately, will those shipments get to your end customer as fast or quicker than if you did them yourself right um there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it within that but that's basically like the into the out the location based importance you want to make sure that the product and the services you're requiring that the three people has experience with with both if you're selling water bottles or consumer packaged goods or any different industry? Do they have the industry experience or do they have the service experience? And can you get comfortable with like through references or a site visit or other just to be sure that what you're asking in terms of service is, is a capability and um, is up to the standard of what you're looking for. The main point there would be to focus on your business and a lot, you know, oftentimes I think supply chains are a bit of an off afterthought and it's it's very, very time consuming. So like why, what, like you think about anything you do, why would you take away like, so if you developed an awesome product, that's your specialty. Now, you're not, your specialty is not in warehousing, picking and packing, ordering supplies. And in most small business owners or most small brands, don't have the bandwidth to do that so in doing everything you take away the opportunity to sell or to uh improve your products right that that's kind of like the gist of what i see the difference being like if like i don't i i think i might have a problem with my roof i'm not gonna fix it myself that'd be crazy i'd create a bigger problem right so i don't know like, i just try to simplify these types of things to say like what we do isn't like overly overly complex or complicated but it, but we do it well right and i think it goes back to that trust too to say like we are that extension of your brand we do guarantee our accuracy we do guarantee the quality um so that handoffs easier but yeah why would you want to try to do this yourself if you're not you know if there's not a it's significant savings now sometimes if you're only shipping out 10 orders per day there is that you know typically where you where it does make more sense to do it in house right because we have we have overhead costs as well we do have costs so there is there is that point where it is a uh, it is the right time, and you know we talk to people and tell them like come back to us when you hit this number or this number of orders or revenue. It's going to make more sense for you to be outsourcing. Um, we can't save you money currently, and just having those upfront conversations um, more times than not, you end up hearing back from them if they've reached you know those uh, those goals, those milestones. So yeah, I think that's the, the key. And you, you come across just a variety of different types of people too, right? It could be somebody selling on, on Etsy that doesn't have even like the production or manufacturing set up yet, but they have an awesome product. That can be way too early in the sales cycle for us to be really talking to them. Whereas if they have a product that's, you know, selling and selling quickly, then yes, then we can quickly move with them um, because no sales are bad, but too many sales are bad as well, right? If you if you don't have the supply chain, so if you don't have manufacturing set up, we can also assist in evaluating like reorder points and lead time. So if you know that um, we can track products trending, so if something shifts, we can say, not in a same, but it's more reported out to show the SKU XYZ is selling at this rate and they'll trigger reorder point for their manufacturer, and then they can get stock in earlier. 
so I think to answer the first part of the question, we'd say like what what are the initial questions a um, a brand should be asking? Do you have experience with that with this service? And then, um, you know, is there flexibility and responsiveness to to grow? So, if a company is going to outsource, they are in all likelihood growing and need to be aligned with a partner that's also growing and has the ability to grow. So I think that would be huge. Like if I were looking for someone to say, here are my current needs, but here are my needs in you know, a year and forecasted in who knows, two, three, four, five years. And um, is this someone that I can partner with in the longer term, knowing that the, um, the team's there, the systems are in place, and the uh you know and financially it's able to, to to grow with with the company so just the due diligence for um making sure that it won't be a short-term relationship in which some of the service capabilities are there but not all of them for longer term so making sure that they're a long-term partner Transparent pricing. So those that give you sort of an out of the box, like it's going to be a great deal and here's what it's going to cost. And then later on find out there's hidden fees and surprises. And, you know, every time you ask for anything, there's a, a large additional fee attached to that. So I try to put together pricing that's not only transparent, but taking their actual business and telling them what the cost will be. So I think that's, that's a big one that, people can get burnt by to say that this is um, going to cost one and then the invoice arrives and it's a different number. And then just, you know, visibility to your operation. So when you're outsourcing, you're giving over a lot of control. It goes back to the trust part, but it's also like the trust and, you know, verify. So are the tools in place to be able to view your inventory, to view order activity? A customer calls you, can you quickly pull up? for example, a tracking number, things like that. So you want to be able to virtually still manage your inventory, even if you don't physically see it in the outsource scenario. That, you know, things move so quickly in this space that I think a five to 10 year projection is, it'd be, I, you know, I'd go to the casino and said, <laughs> if, I, if I actually knew that, I do see a trend in terms of like, Traditional, so like take the traditional retailer where um, they're a brick and mortar and then they expanded in other channels to say, um, you own a sporting goods store and then you move into e-com and then you move into retail. It seems like a lot safer bet and a lot more um, popular bet right now is to start native. So start online and then grow into those other channels. So specifically to renewal, I I see, and I've talked and worked with other three PLs. I think it's just the um, the approach, the customer service is quite a bit different in terms of like getting to know the client and making sure that it's a good partnership prior to engaging. So like you vet on both sides, they're vetting us and we're vetting them. So you know. Is this the product that we believe in that's growing? Is it financially stable on their end? And um, do our values align? I like the autonomy. I like the fact that it's growing quickly and it's not risk adverse. I bring ideas and they're, they're heard. It's not always a, a green light, but that's to be expected. The ability just to, to move quickly uh, I've been involved in a few different projects where, you know, within a, within a day we've been awarded work and within a few days we're operating and, and running a new part of the business. So that part's pretty exciting. Just the fact that they do have the resources and the, um, the appetite, I guess, to, to, to make those quick decisions and quick moves.